Sarah petitions African Rights Commission over proposed amendment of media laws. And the People's Democratic Party PDP warns Governor Matawale not to join the APC or risk losing his seat. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The socio-economic rights and accountability project SEREP has urged the African Commission on Human Rights and People's Rights in Banjul, the Gambia, to come up with provisional measures that could immediately stop the government and the National Assembly from amending uh, two bills to gag the press through arbitrary punishment of journalists and closure of media houses. The query signed uh, by SEREP's Deputy Director Kalawale Olua Dari followed the move to push two repressive bills to amend the National Broadcasting Act and the Nigeria Press Council Act. Well, joining us to discuss this is Kalawale Olua Dari. He's a Deputy Director, SEREP, and we have Kofi Battels, a broadcast journalist, and we're also being joined by uh, a lawyer, Monde Obani, who is now a doctor. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to start with you, uh, Kolawale, because um, Sarah is at the forefront of this. Um, even though the Senate has come out to say that, you know, he has no plans to gag the media, but then Sarah is uh, insistent that, you know, these bills that have been put forward are somewhat to gag the press and also to shut down media houses. Um, why do you think so? The antecedents of this administration bears out that uh, if one of the amendments to the Act is meant to get a court to regulate the media and print houses, then we can look to what the National Broadcasting Commission have done so far in the last six years with the, with the Broadcasting Code. Several um, directives to, to media houses, including the punitive sanctions uh, to channels TV over the, some of the other media houses about COVID of as uh, pro including the latest directive for media houses uh, to deactivate their Twitter account. That itself, without even looking at the provisions of those bills, is enough to establish that this administration is out uh, to stifle freedom of expression. Um, yes, w w you, what you pointed to is very interesting, but as a lawyer, I'm going to press on you again are there have you really studied those bills to see if uh, standing alone do those bills really need the the injection of these new clauses or phrases that the um the minister of information was re making reference to or even the person who sponsored that bill on the house of the on the floor of the national assembly had to I is there any need for it and is and what exactly is that clause that they are trying to inf uh, you know impute into the um into the act uh, there are two aspects to this. One is the, the content of the bill itself, and then the use, the likely use. And we can infer the likely use from the antecedents of government. But for the content of those bills themselves, uh, for example, we can look at the Press um, Council Act, the, the bill to amend the, the Act. Section 3 creates um, some classes of people who would be members of that council. And we see prominently among those people, uh, people that are nominated by the Minister of Information, who, for the record, is uh, a politician appointed by this administration. And to think that these people are meant to pro uh, provide codes that would uh, guide the media and print houses uh, alone speaks of the... Uh, the, the, the use of these bills when they eventually uh, become, become law. And, and looking at the NBC Act itself, before it was amended, we've seen the way it's been used by the NBC. And frankly, the NBC Act does not need any amendment for the NBC to carry out its regulative functions over media houses as it were. The provisions of Section 3R is very clear on what the NBC can do and what the NBC cannot do. If that bill is amended to give the NBC much more powers, what we are going to see is that these uh, regulatory bodies, authorities, 
uh, will, will overstep their bounds. We've seen them do that uh, over and again. We've seen innocent laws like the Cyber Crimes Act. It looks innocent in print, but we've seen how it's been used. We've all seen um, our laws like, the, like, like, the, like treason, uh, treason act. We've seen the way it's been used. So can we trust government with this kind of uh, with laws that circumvent civil liberties and, and affect the freedom of expression? That is a very important question we need to consider. Interesting question. I will throw the next question to Dr. Obani because um, of something the Senate said, and I'd like to quote them directly. I hope that that's put on the screen. Uh, the Senate uh, said, and I quote, uh, while freedom of speech is an inalienable right of the people and effectively captured in the 1999 Constitution, there's a need to ensure that some regulations are put in place to prevent reckless and irresponsible use of such rights as um, had been exhibited by a few media establishments and individuals in recent times in the country. So Barrister Albani, looking at this statement by the Senate, because they're making um, you know, an excuse for, or giving you reasons why they think that this bill should fly and should be um, you know, uh, amended. Uh, how convinced are you uh, by that statement uh, that the Senate has put out because they're saying that many people have somewhat misused, you know, the, the free speech that we have. And, and of course, they're saying that there is a thin line between that and the misuse of your free speech. So how convincing is the Senate and, and do you agree with them? Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I am not convinced uh, that there is good intention on the part of uh, the present uh, leadership of uh, FPC uh, in whatever they want to do with the amendment of the media laws. Uh, from beginning, besides showing uh, they, are, they are clearly averse to free speech in Nigeria, and there have been instances where, which uh, Kola Bole has, my brother has rightly pointed out, that they have uh, shown uh, some level of recklessness on their own party, clamping down on free speech, it, and forgetting that the, the press has a constitutional responsibility under uh, Part 2 of 1999 Constitution uh, to carry out their responsibility of informing the members of the public about government policies. So it is this clear averseness that has been shown over time by this government that makes any person not to trust any media laws that they want to amend at this point in time. Nobody believes the Senate in what they said about not uh, trying to guard the press. The point is that to what purpose? What are you amending? What is the reason for that amendment? What has been your antecedent uh, in, the, in the previous times? You know, where people have freely expressed themselves and how you have clamped down there. And now you are asking for more powers. You are trying to amend in order to bring in more persons you know, that will be appointed by the government in order to really, really violate the, the right of Nigerians to freely express themselves. You know, It is it's clear with the banning of Twitter, it's clear with the issue that they want to tax all the all the all the platforms, you know, that we Nigerians use to express ourselves freely, and of course with the constant threat. There have been this threat, you know, that uh, 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 like Mohammed, every day like Mohammed sleeps and wakes up with threats of the fact that he wants to gag Nigerians, he wants to ban all the social media platforms of all the excesses, according to him, that have been committed by them, of all the crimes. And we forgot the fact that this government came strongly into power under the auspices of uh, the strong uh, you know, social use of social media. And Nigerians you know, aligned with them in order to criticize the previous government and actually broke the previous government out because of the use of social media. And when they, immediately they came in, they start showing so much resentment and so much threat hanging over the heads of Nigerians in the usage of social media. And so I am not really, really convinced that there is any good intention on the part of this government in this amendment that they want to carry out. And I will not even believe the Senate, who have always said that anything that the president does or says, you know, they will always abide by that, even when it's contrary to the will and aspirations of Nigeria. So I am not amused. I am clearly, clearly not amused. I'm not in tandem. I wholeheartedly adopt the submission of Paula Wale that these guys have a dissident that is clearly dangerous and we cannot maybe allow them to carry out this amendment that will clearly uh, violate the rights of Nigerians on the issue of free speech. I'm going to ask you one more question before I go to Kofi Battelle's, Barista Bani. Uh, why do you think the government is so um, 
you know, bent on making sure that this effect is, that this change is affected, you know, in these two um, bills. Again, why do you think they're pushing for this? What is the end game? What do you presume the end game is? Because the government has just two, the APC government, this Buhari administration has two more years before it bows out. So what do you think the end game is? I think it's a, it's a question uh, all of us should, you know, really sit down upon that and, and then begin to, you know, decipher the reason for this. Why the pursuit? Why the, why the frenzy? Why, why the hurry? And why are they pushing it, you know, with so much force? Is there something that we don't know? Of course, when you begin to see politicians from uh, the other, you know, major opposition political party all jumping into FBC, what is clearly behind the mind of these politicians? What do they want to do with us in 2023? You know, they don't want to turn Nigeria into one political, uh, uh, one party state. And at the same time, make sure that, uh, you, of course, you know what happens in one party state. You know, there won't be any opposition. There won't be any free allowance for free speech. Anyone that says anything that the government considers to be, you know, uh, adverse to them, the person will be, will be put in jail. So are they planning towards that direction? You know, so I am also, you know, amazed. And you know, I'm clearly, clearly alarmed uh, with the alacrity and, and, the, and the kind of push, you know, that they clearly now playing out with this issue of amendment, you know. So all of us should be worried. That is a beautiful question you have asked. What, what end? This government has only two years. So what is all this that Russia should now do in order to make sure that the social media platforms are under their wraps, to make sure that the media houses are clearly under their wraps and all that? If they want to turn Nigeria into something else, so we should be we should be worried, we should be alarmed, and we should raise queries and interrogation on these issues. So I, I love the question. And I think that we, we, as we ponder, we may be able to find this in for others. Uh, Kofi Batels, you're a journalist, obviously, and you work, you have worked with, um, you know, talk radio. You talked a lot about, you know, news, current affairs, politics, and you've had your fair share of somewhat, some, some subtle gagging. You have had issues with the DSS, and you, <laughs> you've had to answer questions. You know where I'm going. There are people uh, who have insinuated that um, the government is threatened by the power that the media wields, the fact that um, the media is um, allowed so much freedom and the media is seemingly the, you know, the hope of the common person. Um, do, you, do you agree that there is something that the government is afraid of and that's why these bills are being pushed or do you think otherwise? Uh, uh, Marion, I guess your question is for me. I had a bit of an yes, audio you. issue hearing you, but I think I can hear you now clearly. I, I, I think that, um, you know, it, it, it's uh, a bit surprising the the concentration, the fixation uh, uh, of this particular administration on media matters, be it social media, be it print media, be it traditional media. Um, uh, um, uh, a popular and famous Nigerian, uh, Olushego Shoba, recently described this um, uh, amendment to the Press Council Bill and the National Broadcasting uh, uh, Commission Bills as uh, worse than, than Decree 4. Now, for those who lived in Nigeria, the military era, they would know what Decree 4 is all about. And for somebody such a senior citizen to, to describe these bills, uh, the amendments to these bills as um, worse than Decree 4, I think that says a lot. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, the National Press or Nigerian Press Organization, which is uh, a body that uh, includes the uh, Guild of Editors, the uh, Newspaper Proprietors Association, and the Nigerian Union of Journalists themselves, have also come out to voice opposition to this particular uh, these amendments. Uh, and and uh, we have uh, not a few, you know, non-government organizations like Serap, who you have here, also, you know, voicing opposition to this bill. Um, it, it, the government should simply read the writing on the wall and, and realize that um, it's not doing something right. I mean, you cannot be, be, be right and every other person be wrong. Um, these are trying times for freedom of the press in Nigeria. You know, the, the press is very critical um, to the sustenance of democracy in every nation. As a matter of fact, uh, the press is, is probably the only professional um, a, a, a group given recognition by the Nigerian constitution. Um, and the lawyers on this program will agree that in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, 1999 as amended, you have the provisions for the press to play a role in, in checkmating the, 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 the the government, the politicians, and to ensure that there is information dissemination and holding leaders to account. So if the press is gagged, then of course our democracy is dead. Uh, do you feel threatened as a journalist right now with all of that, all, that, all that's happening, the fact that you are unable to use Twitter legitimately because your country has shot it down, and there are threats every day uh, about the fact that 
they might take up, take down social other social media uh, platforms like WhatsApp, Instagram, and, and Facebook. Uh, do you feel threatened? Do you feel stifled when you're doing your job? Do you feel the need to be subtle even when you want to tell the truth uh, and put out facts? You, do you feel that stifling effect on your daily job because of you know those messages that are put out by NBC every other day? I, I wouldn't say I feel threatened, you know, or I feel uh, I feel stifled, but I would say that um, um, these are trying times for the press in Nigeria. Uh, these are trying times because, of course, the resolve of the, of the press has been threatened. Uh, you know, the civic space in which the press operates is, is shrinking more and more. Um, I mean, if you, if, you, if you talk to observers, people in the international community, people in the, you know, civil rights organizations in Nigeria, they would say in, in the past few years, uh, you know, prior to now, the civic space was expanding. You know, Nigerians are becoming more vocal, uh, you know, when it comes came to issues of holding leaders to account. But in recent times, the civic space has begun to shrug. And, uh, you know, the, the leaders, the politicians, and those in government have become emboldened, including the government agencies, um, to to confront the press. I mean, you know of, of organizations, press, uh, media organizations that have been fined, you know of uh, press men and journalists who have been arrested and, 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 and placed in detention. Some with very bogus uh, uh, charges placed on them. I mean, I myself have been the beneficiary of um, uh, police brutality and uh, attacks from government. Um, so I don't feel threatened, but these are trying and testing times. Um, for, for, for the media and for journalists and the press generally in Nigeria. Let me go back to you, Kolawale, because your um, NGO is championing all of this. Let's, let's break down the fact that the government is trying to re-regulate not just the media, the conventional and traditional media, they're trying to also regulate social media. Shouldn't we be having that conversation? Because we know, looking at what's happened in India uh, and, and the fact that they're also having issues with Twitter and Facebook, Australia is also trying uh, to regulate Facebook because they feel that it's either been used for good and for bad. Shouldn't we be having that conversation of at least thinking that maybe there should be some form of regulation, even if it's not the way that the government is going about it? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need to be clear on the context uh, for which that definition of regulation is being made, particularly we, we need to look at who is speaking. From on the part of government, there's so much being said about regulating. So regulating is it from the financial aspect of registration and possibly taxation-wise, or we're talking of content or what they deem to be either aid speech or harmful, and that is where the problem lies, when we zero in on what is the intent of government when they talk of regulation. If the challenge, as been identified in very different climes, is the, the potential for harmful um, speech or things to come out from the social media, then I can say we have enough laws in Nigeria that, that do that clearly. We have laws that, that, go, that, that would make you liable uh, in, in, in civil law, in civil wrong for, for tort and libel. And we have the Cyber Crimes Act, who I would say has wrongfully criminalized some aspects of, 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 of hate speech as well. So why do we need regulation? Government needs to clearly come out to define what they mean by regulation and what, what aim they, they, they seek to, 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 to get from regulating social media. And to answer your question, the short answer will be no, we don't need any sort of regulation now, if at all, possibly for the purposes of tax, and, and that has to be clearly defined in whatever legal framework they're coming up, uh, coming up with, but not regulation that will determine what is being put out, how that is to be broadcasted, uh, broadcast, or, 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 how, or how I'm going to speak for instance, the NBC telling media houses uh, which platforms they can use to disseminate their views. It's just clearly wrong. Okay. Um, back to you, uh, Dr. Obani. Um, is this the most pressing issue that Nigeria has now? Because I had asked that question earlier on. Um, Nigeria has a lot of problems that, you know, we need to deal with. But again, just as I asked Kolawoli, uh, regulating social media, pushing these bills, would it in any way solve our problems of insecurity, the strife that we're facing right now, the fact that the cost of living is rising high, the Naira is taking a deep dive. I mean, literally everything is going wrong. If we do, if we were, for example, to say, let's go ahead with this bill and, and let it be signed into law, what would he address as per the problems that we have right now? Let me tell you the truth. Uh, why the government is pushing for this amendment and trying to guide Nigeria is that you know, when a member of the in 2014, 
uh, they made several promises of what they intend to do. They were even saying that they want the dollar and naira to be at par, that uh, we'll be buying uh, fuel in the in the in the in the market, uh, you know, at a certain price. Uh, several other things they made promises for, you know, for which they have actually failed. And for that, Nigerians uh, are freely using these uh, social media platforms and the media to express themselves and criticize the government and also offer a possible way of uh, trying to tell the government what they should do to give Nigerians good governance. And then the government, don't, they, don't, they don't want that advice. They don't want that leeway. They don't want Nigerians to open up to say, oh, we are not finding your governance or, uh, all that uh, palatable. Uh, and that is the reason why they are going after the, the press in, in all areas and going after the social media. To answer your question directly, the issue of gagging the press and, and in not allowing Nigeria to really express themselves will actually exacerbate uh, some of the crises we are presently facing. We have a lot of crises in the country, insecurity, we have the issue of economic problems. People are unemployed. They are, they, the foreigners are not coming into the country. You now further want to enter into crisis with the people by gagging them, don't allow them to express themselves and all that. And then crisis will improve. And investors will be looking at your country as a crisis reading country. So why would they want to come and invest in a country where there is crisis? Why would they want to come and invest in a country where people cannot freely express themselves? So for that, the, the government is painting themselves you know, in bad light before the international community. And this is where dissuading those guys that want to come in here to invest and probably employ Nigerians. So to me, they are not solving the problem. They are really exacerbating the matter. They are creating more problems that they can solve. The best thing they can do is to try as much as possible to listen to the people. What are they saying? What do they want? What is it that we are not getting right? What is it we are supposed to do we are not doing right? And when the people express themselves freely, then you can now know where they are, where, they are, where it's pinching them. And you can be able to address those issues and then probably be at peace with them. Nigerians love their leaders. Nigerians are very, very obedient. But what we want is quality leadership, and that is clearly lacking. And whenever it lacks, and Nigerians now open themselves to express themselves freely, our leaders don't like such things. And the next thing that they come after them, and then exacerbating the crisis in the long run. So I think that the best thing that this government should do is to actually listen to the people and try to address those issues. And, and, and all of us will be happy. For now, Nigerians are not smiling. And that is the truth. And lastly, Kofi Batels, um, and just, just like Paris Obani has said, um, Nigerians have... The Senate, these people are representatives of the voices of the average Nigerian person. As much as people, a few, a handful of people know how to recall their senators, uh, a few people don't even have access to their senators. So if what Baris Obani is saying is they need to listen to the people, um, how come these people are speaking but their representatives are doing the total opposite? So if you were to um, advise Nigerians as to how they can deal with the members that are representing them, what do they do? Uh, Mayor, was that meant for me? Um, yes, the, the for you. For you. Break, so could you please repeat the question? So I'm saying that, um, you know, Barisa Bani said that Nigerians are speaking, but the government is not listening. And I'm saying that, that we have representatives, we have senators, and these are supposed to be people who take our views into consideration. So what do we do to get these people to listen to us and do what we need for them to do? You see, um, I've always said that, you know, um, Nigerian, the politics of Nigeria is not divided along uh, party lines as people know it, APC versus PDP. No, no, no. It's, it's you know, the political class versus the masses. Um, and, of course, when it comes to uh, politics in Nigeria, it's not really based on um, uh, ideological, you know, grounds so. or you know, grounds of uh, beliefs or, you know, differences in opinion. It's basically, you know, on the grounds of, of interest. And when it comes to interest, um, you, you could see someone from the North together with someone from the South, someone from APC together with someone from the PDP. That's why, you know, it's very easy for the politicians in this country to, to cross carpets uh, many times in a year from one party to the other. I mean, we're hearing that the governor of Zamfara State is moving from the PDP to the APC. Uh, that's just the latest. Um, so so, so the, the, the representatives and the politicians are probably um, may, may be said to be beneficiaries of, of, of any you know, system or laws that will um, make it harder for people to, to um, criticize government. Uh, you know, and and that, that may inform why um, you have such bipartisanship on something like this. And when it comes to issues that affect the common man, of course, you wouldn't see bipartisanship 
Uh, but when it comes to things like this, you would see bipartisanship. Well, um, who is that, that, that bold, courageous, uh, Moses-like uh, representative or senator who will stand up and, and, and say, no, this has got to stop? Well, time will tell. You know, but, but Marianne, um, it remains to be seen if this law will see the light of day or the amendments. I mean, I'll be surprised to see that the Minister of Information is, is the one who is um, setting the, the codes and standards for the regulation of the press, for such a, a body to regulate codes and standards, a codes of ethics for a press. I think the, the, the press and the media in general is, is, is well qualified, has eminent people to set standards for itself. We don't need a government official, a minister appointed by the president of the day, whichever party produces him, to set standards for that fraternity. I mean, for the president to be the one to appoint uh, the, the head of such a council, the chairman of such a council, um, like the press council, I think that is something that Nigerians do not need at this time. The press is well equipped, well qualified to regulate itself. Imagine the, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General Federation setting standards for um, uh, the legal profession in Nigeria. I'm sure uh, um, um, Dr. Obadi would not take it sitting down. And we, we the press, don't want to see this stuff like that. So it's, it's really, really, really worrying times for the press in Nigeria. Well, Kalawale Luadare is of Serap. Uh, Dr. Mundo Bani is a legal practitioner and Kofi Batels is a journalist. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. All right. Well, we'll take a short break. And when we return, PDP warns Governor Matawale against joining the APC or else there will be consequences. We'll be right back after this break.